Well, hey guys, just sipping on a little Totoro here with Beauty Dust. Um, I hope your week is going well. I get questions from you all pretty much on a daily basis about the Neutrogena Hydra Boost water um, gel um, sunscreens. They're SPF 30, they have an SPF 50 as well. You asked me to review this, what are my thoughts on it, and can I compare and contrast it to <clears throat> a Japanese sunscreen that I previously was using, the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence. This is the 2011 formulation. SPF 50 plus. Can I compare and contrast the two? Is this an American dupe for this? So that's what we're going to chit chat about in today's video. These are both chemical sunscreens. Chemical sunscreens contain combinations of, of uh, filters that um, absorb ultraviolet light of different wavelengths. And the two categories of ultraviolet light that we need to concern ourselves with as far as skin health and, and overall health are UVA and UVB. Wavelengths of UVB are those that um, are responsible for sunburn and for burning our skin and also cause direct DNA damage and are responsible for skin cancers. So protection against UVB is certainly imperative for not only not getting a sunburn, but also for skin cancer prevention. UVA, um, while it can contribute to a certain extent to both a burn and, and likely skin cancer as well, UVA is the wavelength of ultraviolet light that actually penetrates our skin much more deeply and can interfere with our skin's immune system and it damages the collagen framework in, our, in the deeper layers of our skin, sets the stage for wrinkles and fine lines, and just compromises the overall health of the skin barrier. So both components of ultraviolet light are very important that for a sunscreen to, to afford protection. And those labeled broad spectrum are sunscreens that, that do that, to, you know, that have been that that have have proven themselves capable of doing that. So first up, the Neutrogena Hydra Boost Water Gel Lotion Sunscreen, SPF 30. Um, this chemical sunscreen, uh, it's main, it's, it's only UVA filter. So the only filter in this <clears throat> protecting against UVA, the wavelength that penetrates deeply and ages the skin, is avabenzone. Avabenzone is um, a chemical, chemical filter that offers protection against the full spectrum of UVA. Um, it has a peak absorption of 352 nanometers, a maximum absorption. So it really, a, a filter on its own, it's, it's pretty good at giving us, giving us protection against UVA. However, avabenzone is limited in that it degrades pretty quickly upon exposure to light. It's not very photostable. And what that means is that after you apply the sunscreen, the UVA protection, all right, the aging and raging rays as I call them, the UVA protection is going to start to, to decline with time. So you need to be aware of that, that your UVA protection from the sunscreen is not, is not on a, you know, on a baseline continuum, that it starts, it starts to decline. And then, in addition to avabenzone, this um, sunscreen contains homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene, which are all uh, UVB filters that are fine um, and do a very good job absorbing UVB. Um, so this offers good protection against those UVB waves that burn us and that can contribute to skin cancer most, most, most heartily, we'll say, okay? Um, but the, the UVA in this is not quite strong. Um, in the United States, we don't have as many of the filters that they have in Japan and in Europe and in other countries. So this is one of our, this is one of our better options here that Neutrogena has. And it's, you know, a standard combination of chemical sunscreens. If you really want reliable, reliable UVA protection here in the US, your best bet, although it's not as cosmetically elegant, but your best bet is to select sunscreens that have zinc in them. Um, uh, that are not chemical, that are mineral. All right, and I've explained the differences between chemical and mineral in my sunscreen Q and A's. But for purposes of this video and reviewing the chemical, these chemical sunscreens, do know that the UVA that you get from this is is not is not consistent. It's not is, is not persistent uh, after you apply it. Okay. 
But as far as the aesthetics of how it goes on, it is a pearly white gel, as you can see here. And uh, it, it almost looks just like any other ordinary sunscreen. And I'm just going to put a little here to show you guys how it looks going on. Um, you know, it blends in pretty easily. I'm just going to do a cheek here on the left side. <laughs> But what I detest about this sunscreen and why I do not recommend it or any of the other Neutrogena Hydro Boost sunscreens is that they put this horrific fragrance in this that is so off-putting. Uh, it's the same fragrance that they put in many of the other Hydro Boost products that I'm not a fan of. It's really, really strong. So, you know, if you are even the slightest bit sensitive to fragrance, you're not going to enjoy this. Fragrance has no, no place in sunscreens. Fragrance is a very common cause of allergic contact dermatitis. Allergic contact dermatitis is something that can occur to anything, all right? It's not, it's not uh, that, you know, fragrance is the only, only thing. But the point is that our sunscreen doesn't need to smell good, all right? So we don't need that added risk. And fragrance is really a common problem. This fragrance is really off-putting. So this sunscreen is water resistant. Uh, what that means is that it will retain the SPF. So the SPF is a reflection of the sunscreen's uh, ability to protect you against a burn. It really just is mostly talking, it's really mostly talking about the UVB protection. And what water resistant means is that when the sunscreen um, on, on human skin is exposed to a whirlpool bath, a uh, 20 minute whirlpool bath immersion, uh, and you repeat that four times so for a total of 80 minutes, it will retain that SPF. But it doesn't um, mean that you can, <laughs> you don't need to reapply after you get out of the pool, out of, out of, the, sh out of the shower, after you get out of the water. Now, how does it compare to the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence? I was previously using this, and I really like this sunscreen a lot, just as far as the aesthetics. Um, it looks kind of similar, all right? So it's, it's, it's a little bit more yellowy, but we'll just put it on on the other cheek here, all right? And, you know, I mean, they're, they're apples and apples. <laughs> gala apple to gala apple here. I mean, they're essentially the same. This does not have a strong fragrance that you can smell. Some people say it smells like alcohol and they don't like it. Some people do detect a slight citrusy scent to it. But this, unfortunately, like Neutrogena Hydro Boost uh, sunscreen, also has fragrance in it. So that is not great right off the bat. All right, but let's talk about the chemical filters in the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence. First of all, this sunscreen has something called, di I'm going to read it here off the sheet because it's a long name, diethyl amino hydroxybenzoyl hexawyl benzoate, which is Uvenol A+. Plus <laughs> for, uh, that's, the, that's the trade name, Uvenol A+. Plus. Uvenol A+, plus is um, like avobenzone, a great UVA filter. However, unlike avobenzone, Uvenol A, A plus, or a diethyl amino hydroxy benzoyl hexyl benzoate. <laughs> Say that at a party. You'll make a lot of friends. Um, it is photostable. So you put this on and the UVA protection is um, a little bit more consistent um, after you apply it. It doesn't, it doesn't decline as precipitously as, as uh, Hydro Boost. It is, it is more robust in that regard. So Uvenol A plus is much better than avobenzone in that it uh, it doesn't it doesn't it's much more photostable. Unfortunately, Uvenol A plus has not been approved here in the U.S. yet for our sunscreens. So it's not in our sunscreens. It is approved in concentrations up to 10%, I believe, in Europe and Japan and many other countries, Mexico as well, I believe. Um, I'm almost certain Mexico as well. <clears throat> So really, it, you know, the U.S. sunscreens are behind in the chemical filters as far as that. Uvenol A plus is much is a much better UVA filter than avobenzone. So that gives Biore some more power over Neutrogena Hydro, Hydro Boost sunscreen for sure. But both have fragrance. Then the UVB filter in this is Octinoxate, which gives good UVB. So this has essentially two two filters in it one that's very good for uva and one that's good for uvb 
and this uh, unfortunately does have fragrance as well. So this is better than the Neutrogena Hydro Boost sunscreen in my, my opinion for sure, but neither are perfect because they both have, have this fragrance in it that you know I think would be better off. A Japanese sunscreen that I prefer over the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence and that I recommend strongly over that uh, because it does not have fragrance is the Hadalabo UV White Gel. Um, this is a fantastic sunscreen. <laughs> it is SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. I was previously using this and um, you know they changed, they, they re-released it I guess, kind of like when Disney relinquishes a uh, Disney movie from the vault. They re-relinquished it and about the time they were doing that the price on Amazon skyrocketed and you guys flipped out. Then I stopped using it because I ran out of the tube that I was using at the time um, and I have since acquired more. They have repackaged it in a jar um, which isn't fantastic. That doesn't make it easy to to apply and use. Um, I could be wrong. They may have it in bottles and tubes um, on their website. I'm not entirely sure, but I have it here in the jar. You can get it in the jar from Yes Style, from Amazon, a variety of sources, um, and I really, really like it and strongly recommend it. Here, I have a little spatula here, <laughs> a little scoopy doodle. And this this one, you know, I'm going to put this on my forehead here. Uh, it comes out, you know, very similar to all of them. I mean, they all look identical right like like liquidy mayonnaise like honestly they all look the same to me um, okay this one however when I put it on it is a lot more moisturizing so you can see on my forehead I have Hadalabo here on the left cheek I have Neutrogena and on the right cheek I have Biore. And I mean, honestly, they really all appear the same. I would say just as far as aesthetics and putting on, Hadalabo goes on a lot more kind of moisturizing. Doesn't, I think this is less likely to bother people by virtue of the fact that it doesn't have that, that awful fragrance in it. And I really like it. But let's talk about the filters in this bad boy. They are far superior to either of the two, either, either Biore or Neutrogena. This bad boy has um, Tinosorb S in it. Tinosorb S is also called Bimotrizinol. It is phenomenal. It will. It is the best, the most broad spectrum chemical sunscreen out there. Tinosorb S. It protects against both UVB and UVA. So it has that in it. It is very photostable. It is um, approved unfortunately not in the United States, is approved in Japan, concentrations up to 3%, I believe, and in Europe up to 10%, as well as many other countries. Tinosorb S. Tinosorb S um, is oil soluble, so it goes into moisturizing formulas like this very well. They reformulated Tinosorb and kind of polymerized it in such a manner to make it water soluble, so that's that was, you know, rebranded as Tinosorb S Aqua. Um, that tends to be in a lot of the more aqua-y or watery, liquidy formulations, but it is a phenomenal chemical filter. I really wish we would get it here in the United States and quit messing around. Um, it's very photostable. It's fantastic. Most efficient, broad spectrum, oil soluble, uh, chemical filter out there and is a good one. So it has that in it. In addition to Tinosorb S, it also has Octinoxate in it, which is a UVB filter. It also has something called Parcel SLX. Parcel SLX is a UVB filter as well as a photo stabilizer that uh, is, um, you know, a UVB filter. It's kind of polymeric, so it kind of gives things a pearlescence and a shine. It's Approved in the United States as a product protectant, so it can protect, uh, you know, other cosmetic products from their ingredients uh, degrading by virtue of UV, but it's not approved here in the U.S. for use as a sunscreen filter ingredient, unfortunately. Um, so you may find it in shampoos and leave-on conditioner type things but you won't find it in our sunscreen. It is phenomenal as a UVB filter and it's also a photo stabilizer. So this has that going for it. It also has Juvenil A+, again, that is another UVA filter in this. Juvenil A+, um, offers uh, protection 
against the entire UVA range. So this has for your UVA, it's got tinisorb and it has Uvenol A plus in it. And then it's got some additional UVB filters, octane oxate, parcel SLX, which is also a photo stabilizer. And lastly, it has titanium dioxide, a mineral, a mineral sunscreen, not a chemical sunscreen, a mineral sunscreen that also offers protection against UVB and UVA. So I would say as far as bang for your buck and skin protection, this offers the best, the Hotolabo um, UV white gel for sure. This is the one that I strongly recommend over either of these personally. A, it doesn't have fragrance, very gentle, very moisturizing, superior sunscreen. It's very moisturizing, very gentle. I think it's good for, um, I think people with sensitive skin would be would be okay giving this a try. A lot of these chemical sunscreens, however, tend to sting people with, with sensitive skin no matter what. So do know that, um, and I can never predict that for sure, but as far as, as far as the chemical sunscreens go, I would say this is, this is a safe bet to at least give it a try. It's very, very good, and I strongly recommend it over the other two. Um, so I would not run out and buy the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel um, sunscreen if I were any of you. A better purchase from Neutrogena, in my opinion, is the Neutrogena Clear Face um, SPF 30 or 50. I can't remember exactly which, which SPF it is, but that is a much better choice. It doesn't have fragrance, and it blends into the skin really well. It's fine for people with combination skin, oily skin, dry skin. It's pretty moisturizing. It won't break you out. Um, it's a lot less expensive. It does not have this ungodly fragrance to it. So I prefer that over, over this as far the, as the Neutrogena ones. There are a variety of other good Neutrogena sunscreens, but you really have to be careful with Neutrogena, I've found over the years, because they've started adding fragrance here and there to more products. And, you know, like, for example, the Hydro Boost line has many, has a few phenomenal products in it that don't have any fragrance, but many of them have this awful, awful fragrance that they add. I mean, this is the worst fragrance ever. Neutrogena, if you're listening, take it out, take it out. <laughs> then I could recommend it as, as a decent option, but... It's really, really bad. In fact, the left side of my face is, is getting a, I'm getting a unilateral migraine just from, just from having it on the left side of my face. So, um, but anyways, yeah, love Hotolabo, fantastic sunscreen, strongly recommend it. But I hope this video was helpful to you guys in kind of going through the filters, uh, you know, comparing and contrasting the different sunscreens as you all have asked me to do. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.